Okay, welcome back. It's your boy the Brad Geek, and this is part three of Foundation Design in Proco. So this is the third video in the series of tutorials on designing foundations that I've been doing in Proco. Uh, we do two videos already, and this is video three. So in the first two videos, what we did is we we're looking at the input and the design and the calc sheets per tabs of this module so in the input we looked at the parameters that you need to enter and also the loads and i described to you the general the general setup of what you see on the screen on the bottom below this is what i call the 2d view uh, section of the tab and then under the design as well we have a view section where you're able to view what you want you can zoom in zoom out anything that you want and also the output where we discussed everything that is involved in the output and then we also talked about the calculation sheets where this is basically just a record of what uh, occurred when you were calculating your sheets and what was taking place in Procon and this is what you can take to your supervisors i know some are very strict what they want is want to see the calculation that you did in coming up with your design so the next thing that you're going to be looking at what we look doing or looking at is the menu schedule which is the very last thing we're going to look at in this series so the menu schedule is quite easy this is where you see the design what the design that Procon is proposing for you and if you want to switch it up basically this is where you detail your beams your button um, this is where you detail your bases and stub columns or columns or the starter columns so when, let's not waste too much time let's just get right into it so the first thing that you have on the table to the left is your bending schedule parameters so the first row that you have is the schedule file name which is this case the default name that it gives you is best bs but you definitely want to change that so i'll just want to change this to your uh, red base let's just change that to red base okay red base is okay and then the next thing that you want to do what they have is bars in the bottom x direction so what happens is this table if you see this table is like connected the bending schedule parameters and the rebar so the first thing that you have is bars in the bottom x direction so this gives you the number of bars that Procon put for you so it put y16 at 250 center to center separations along the x um i know which one is the x by the way I don't know it's somewhere along there so if you check under rebar what it tells you it tells you the required uh, area of steel which was 586 if you still remember under design it was definitely 586 there we go it was 586 back to bending schedule and then it tells you the nominal steel this is the nominal what we're saying this is you know the best that you would want but then it shows you the one that you would have entered given y16 the 250 so to basically change this you can say let's i want to put y16 the 200 so as you can see you have provided more steel than that is required but if you listen this or increase this let me just show you uh y16 at 400 now you have eight y16s bar mark a at 400 to uh, center to center separations b1 this is the bottom layer one and the area that you have entered of steel now the area of steel that you have is 503 which is not adequate for this design so this is what i told you that you can change uh the way that you would want to detail this if you go to 300 let's just check this you still have less but then you would have 11 y16s so let's just put this at um okay sorry this is automatic it's calculated for you well let's just put this back at 250 at 250 you have 804 and you're good to go because the nominal steel all what you have to do is to make sure that the steel that you enter is greater than the nominal steel uh same applies to the y direction as well you have y16 at 250 uh to 250 centers so you can change this as well in case maybe you want a y20s uh this tells you y20 is a 250 what you have is you have 13 y20s at 250 centers and it's giving you uh it's giving you what 16 bars as well now 13 bars but if you put y20s at 300 you now have 11 bars uh 11 bars y20s uh b bar mark b separated 300 to 300 centers and it's in the second bottom layer that is the uppermost layer because the first thing b1 is you first lay the steel in the x and then you lay the steel in the y so same thing but uh, so yeah you can play around with this just make sure it's going up it's you can also put y12s so it all depends what money you have but basically if you're doing with bases you don't want to put 12s because anything that goes underground and bases you really want to make sure that you're doing this because what you can do is you can still put y12s but you're going to need 30 y12 bars that really doesn't make sense you just want to stick let me just see 150 is it adequate 
yeah 150 is not adequate so you really don't want to put y6 you just, just stick to the y16s at 250 centers as well this is for the y and in the x if you want bars you can definitely do that it's it's not allowed it's not uh i'm not saying it's it's not prohibited you can actually add bars if you want if you want to add bars as you can see now it details for you but that is not necessary because you don't really need these bars like you say the required still is zero so you don't need this thing. so this is how this is where you change the main bars the top pad is where you change or the top section of the table is where you change the main bars that you want in your foundation or in your base so in this case for the bottom still we have y16 and 250 which gives you 13 y16 bar mark a 250 b1 so the next thing that you have this other table where the rebar shows you the requires still the nominal still this is what the program is saying hey we want to be safe let's put it's it requires 586 but we put 780 because so many formulas are coming in and theories that will come out i'm not ready to discuss those theories but what i'm just telling you is that you know what this is about the required still nominal still and ended still just make sure your entered still is above your nominal still then the next thing that you have is that under so you have the first table then you have the second table so the second table what it is is column parameters column one column two and then the cover so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to deal with this column parameters for column one and column two so this one you either type c s or n so see what it means is that you have a continuous column if you want to come and check the section view to the right of um, your screen so you have a section view you have a continuous column that is going all the way to the top so it's just going to cut off there so you're telling if, what do you want in the detail do you want to show it as a continuous column or is a stub column so s would be a stub and this is what happens that means your column starters what they're going to do is they're going to come up and you're going to bend them at the top but if you're just going to have a c it means your bars are going to be straight all the way up because you're going to have other straight bars from the top of the column join with these ones overlapping so i'll just remain with the c for now and then for the main bars these are the main bars of your column so these are shown in the section section one so you can say you want four y 16s or you want to go with 20s uh as you can see this is what happens it's 4y20's bar mark E. As you can see, also the diameter of the bars when you look at the section, which is say section core one, increases as well. But um, yeah, you can even put, I think it was 32's. As you can see, when you put 32's, the diameter also increases and you can just play around with that. Okay, so that is easy. That is easy for you guys. So let's just put back 16's and wow, we're back to 16's. And then the middle bars for the vertical faces as well. Uh, it all depends what you want so if you want to put two it's definitely two you always want to have two because it's a square column right so if you want 12s if you want 16s that's up to you changes as well and as you can see you got g and e if you want 16s as well if you want to put 32s it's okay but that really doesn't make sense and also the overlap distance increases as well but i'm just going to stick to 16 not 12s because the main bars because you know procon is quite is good it usually gives you the good default that you want and then this is the lap length factor so what this says is uh the length that you would want for your lapping bars or your column stutters so the lap length factor that i use is 55 right because what it means is that if two bars are going to overlap that is to say you're going to have one in the one that is going to come up what do you want this lapping distance to be because the bars from the top column are going to come and they're going to end at the top of the base but they're going to overlap with the bars that are coming from the base which we call the column status so what it means is you're saying this 55 is going to be multiplied by the diameter of the bar and giving you the distance for for the 16 bars is going to be 55 by 16 okay um 55 by 16 i'm not too sure that is but 50 by 16 that's 800 so 5 by 16 hey it's 880 exactly so this distance for 16 bars is going to be 880 so you're just going to make sure that from the top of the base to where you cut off the steel for your column stutters is going to be 880 and then for 12s uh 55 by 12 just do the math man do the math if it was um 50 by 12 that was definitely going to be 600 then if you add another 12 so it's just let's assume it's 660 yeah i think it's 660 works like that please don't give me problems in my head man it's just shaking me up so and then the next thing that you have is you can specify the diameter of your links uh this is the links so the links as you can see please please sorry about sorry about that so you know the links the ones that you see indicated is r10 
is a so by default uh Procon gives R10 still, but uh, where I'm from, we use Y10, and the bar mark is totally dependent on you. So, link diameter, I usually put 10, but some people use 8, but you just want to be safe in columns, just use 10. So, this is for your column, you know, start a col your columns just after the base. So, the link diameter is 10. You can specify it as well. Link width, um, you know, just, just leave it like that. This is calculated by pro when by the design. Because it's telling you it is it has managed to calculate it given the cover. This are the parameters that it used. No, these are the cover for the base. Uh this is because it gives a generic cover to the column, which is 30. Uh this is by default. So it automatically calculates that for you. And now number of links you specify then these are called fixing links. The number of fixing links, these help uh keep your stutter bar straight so that they don't bend or bulge so that when you put when you start casting your column going from the top of the base, it's straight up and it's okay. So you can increase the number as well. You can if you want to put four, you can put four. If you want to put six, you can put six. If you want to put seven, you want to put seven. And to visualize that, let me just put it out in 3D for you. As you can see, seven are not really necessary. So let's just come out of three um yeah it's it's you can put them three just squeeze them down a bit just squeeze them down a bit so and then column names what do you want to call it let's just call this one red you know you can call it red so as you can see this just names the column changes to red as well section red because your column is named red and then bar mark i usually start off from zero one so just check what happens with bar mark zero one if this was a let's just see what happens when it was a so your bars were named A, so this was bar mark A, bar mark B, bar mark C, but I start off with um, O1. So once you change the program, automatically does that for you. And what you have is you now have bar mark 1, bar mark 2. And then uh, bar mark 3 was supposed to be the top bar in the X direction. Bar mark 4 was supposed to be the top bar in the Y direction, but since we don't have them, it's left out. But program just does that increment for you. So it always reserves those bar marks for that. Then bar mark 5 is always reserved for these corner bars. Then bar mark 6 for the vertical faces. Horizontal faces are bar mark 7. And yeah, same bar mark that you see is the same bar mark that's seen in the section. Okay. And then you can also define the configuration of your bars, whether you want to shape code 52, if it's going to be A, B, or just check what happens when you change um, your bars. It, it, it all depends. It all depends. Uh, just Yeah, so this was top bars. Check what happened. This was what we're using is shape code 35. This is for BS and Sans. It's, it's, it's the same as well. So what happens with shape code 34, it changes the bars as well, how it's going to be. And then uh, shape code 60 in the X and the Y direction, it changes as well. And um, SC, but what we normally, with the normal thing that most people use is a shape code 35. You want to keep it like that. And then for the cover as well, this one is the bottom cover for your base. You can change it, but try to stick with 75 is okay. It goes with mount cover for coverage. I've told you about cover as well. That's the thing that you want to do. And then for the size, you keep it 50 millimeters. And for the columns, you can define it if you want to put uh, 35. Like I told you, it's automatically calculated depending on the cover that you have for your columns. If it's 45, that's what it is, but we're going to keep it to 30. So this, don't mess around with this. It's automatically calculated for you. So if you want to view this thing in 3D, this allows you to visualize. Some of you have never seen this on the ground. So this one going to help you kind of see what it looks like on the ground. This is how you're going to cast it a little bit. Obviously, the links are not going to be like that. You're just going to push them a little bit. But... Uh, for the fixing links, yeah, it's usually just to make sure that these bars and then the top of bars and also the bars that are going to come from, you know, the top are uh, in just straight, just to make sure that they're straight and they connect together nicely. So when you're done, uh, this is quite easy. All you have to do is to say generate schedule and it automatically generates the schedule for you to where you would want them to be created. Okay, so this one is not could not be created because my working folder is I deleted the working folder for this one. So I'll just see what I can do. Or oh, what it does by generation is it creates uh, a pads file for you. We're gonna I will try and do another video where I'll show you how it creates a pad file. But you can also just uh, print out the menu change straight like this. Let's just put it on the desktop. Um, there we go. So there you have your schedule. It's printed out for you. I use Revo Bluebeam for viewing my PDFs. This is a cool software. Let's check my desktop if it's there as well. This one, Revo Blue Bluebeam. It's amazing. You can also buy it online, download it, go to their website, pay for the license. Everything is good. 
um yeah but if you want to get it through other means please go on youtube they show you so many ways to do that so back to the file this is it we think we're good we're good to go and yeah this is great i don't see anything else that uh i haven't taught you guys so if you want to recalculate bs parameters just in case maybe you change something let me just change it up for a bit y2012 so let me just guess see what it does it recalculates those parameters for you so this has been foundation design in procom please don't mind anything else that you see on my desktop is really not necessary and um yeah this is it so thank you very much for tuning in please 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 if this is your first time coming to my channel please hit the subscribe button and if uh, you're coming back just like the video share it hit the subscribe button hit the notification button so that you get my videos as soon as they drop and uh thank you very much for tuning in and until next time so much love peace do subscribe love you